Coming up, setting up your volcano style hot end on the artillery Sidewinder X1. Hey everybody, Chris Sergeant Taz here, and today I'm going to go over how to set up your volcano style hot end with direct drive and what you need to do to get it working right. Um, first up, obviously, this is a giant model that I had made of our hot end. It's a little out of scale, but it's still cool. It is also to hold my miscellaneous markers and pens. Eventually I'll post the model because I re remixed it from somebody else's design because I wanted to make one for ours. So there's that. What I'm going to go over today is more or less how to set one up. As you can see, I have a large model of a standard hot end, not the volcano, but it works on the same premises. So you're going to have your nozzle, your heat brake, and then obviously your cooling fins to keep the upper section cool as it's entering into the heat brake to melt into the melting zone which is in through here. So if you look at it this is how you want it to be even with this is a Bowden type system so the Bowden tube runs all the way through to the nozzle. So this guy here which has got a little split in it. You see the gap I got in there? This Bowden tube runs all the way down into the heat brake, through the heat brake, and touches the nozzle. So what you want to do is you want to push this guy all the way down in, down to the nozzle on your stock hot end. So, in essence, you get the no gaps, because if you get any gap in here, what's going to happen is, is you're going to get back pressure, and this is where you're going to get clogs. So, let's see. Here's your standard volcano style hot end. As you can see, the Bowden runs all the way through the brake, which is really tight. So I'm not going to pull it out, but you get the idea. What do you need to do? So this needs to be cut flush. The PTFE tube needs to be cut flush so it sits flat against the nozzle. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. So you want it touching the nozzle and completing the more or less the whole setup. So it's not have any gaps. It doesn't have any areas where your filament can ooze and pull up and cause you either poor extrusion or obviously the horrible clogs that you get when you don't do it right. Where the confusion comes in is guys upgrading to all metal. You're still going to need a PTFE tube, but it's going to be shorter. So, on one like this guy here, how do you set that up? And what people don't, get, don't really get is how to set it up on your hot end. So what I like to do, and I'll do this for you in a demonstration purpose. I normally take... Oops, and drop everything because that's how we roll. So you take your block like so. Here's your all metal hot end. Now, it's hard to see but you can see there's a short shallow little section of tubing that has to go in there and then your hot end is actually touching the bottom portion of it is going to be flush up against your nozzle inside the block. So what you want to do to start off with is obviously put your all metal into your heat block. I screw it all the way down and I make sure that I get it flush. So it's just slightly right at the rim or the edge because you don't want any threads exposed on this side. This is where it's going to leak if you've got two or three threads sticking up. 
your odds are you're going to get back pressure, it's going to come over, and you're going to have it leaking from the top of your block. Once that's in place, what you do, take your nozzle, screw that in by hand. So you screw it all the way down until you can feel it touching. I don't have my glasses on, so bear with me a minute. So it's touching the block, and you might wind up with a gap. See, there's a slight gap. It's okay to have a gap there. Where you don't want the gap is on the inside. You want these two touching flush, or else you're going to wind up with the same thing as a Bowden. It's going to back up. You're going to cause a clog. It's going to cause some heat creep you don't want. And it's going to start leaking out one way or the other from a location. And you're going to be like, why is it leaking or why is it clogging? Why am I getting poor extrusions? Because they're not flush together. They need to be flush. So when you're looking at, as in the model, if you're like this, it's not going to work. It needs to be flush up. So it needs to sit flush inside, touching each other. Once this is all set up, you're going to have to put your heater cartridge in because it's not going to make it. Um, depending on what uh, thermistor you have, if you have the cartridge style like this one is, where it goes in the side, so you have the screw and the hole, you're fine. You don't need to put that in yet. If you have the other style, I don't know if I got one laying around here or not. Probably not. The other one actually has like a cartridge that inserts in through here and goes down that you need to put in place because you're going to screw this up into your metal backing plate which I'll show an image maybe over here when I get a chance to edit that's going to require you to screw all the way up into it until it stops you want this to stop at the very top so it maintains this gap that's in between the block and your your heat block and your and your hot end so you want that gap, but you want this to stop all the way at top on the aluminum plate. Once that's done, you might wind up with it weird being crooked. What you do is you unscrew your nozzle. Now this one's a little tight right now, but you unscrew your nozzle like a quarter of a turn, put your block where it needs to go, and then tighten your nozzle back up with heat. So you're going to heat it up after it's all set up and put into the uh, aluminum plate. You're going to heat it back up. I usually do about 220 just to get it going nice and hot. Let it run for a few minutes. And then I'll heat tighten. So I'll take a adjustable wrench, hold this block, and then a 10 millimeter, is it? No, 7 millimeter socket for the nozzle. And I'll tighten it up while it's hot because the expansion is going to let everything kind of like expand. And then you'll get that, that gap taken away. And you won't have any gap inside here, which will cause you all kinds of grief. So other than that, I'll throw up a couple more pictures of close-ups just so you can see what's going on and give you an idea. But it's pretty simple to set up. Now the very, very new version 4s of the artillery come with a Kraken style heat break. So this is smooth board. This isn't threaded, which makes it a lot easier than the older versions because you don't have to keep screwing it around with your uh, heater cartridge and cables. You have less likely to, to break them. But how you know if you have one is right over here, you'll see the plate. There's two grub screws that go into the aluminum plate that holds the Kraken style. It's a smooth bore, so it'll slide up and down once you loosen up the, the grub screws. And it's a lot easier to get everything back into place and locate it where you want. It's going to be the same initial setup. And you're still going to want to turn this down a little bit on the nozzle and back it off a little bit to heat tighten so you can get the expansion going but you're still going to want that top section flush to the block you don't want any thread showing inside here you want it to be as flush as possible so you don't get oozing out the top through a couple of loose threads because the back pressure on these gets really he heavy and you will start leaking and you'll see people like why is it inside my sock why am I getting like little drips from the sides where is that coming from it's coming from there. 
almost 100% of the time, you didn't get the threads all the way down, and then you didn't heat tighten your nozzle. So now you're going to get back pressure, pushing back up through the hot end, and oozing at the sides of your block. So other than that, hopefully this short video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, like and subscribe, I appreciate it. And anything else you guys can think of you want to see in the future, let me know as well. Um, I appreciate you watching. And as always, see ya!